Um, I'm here to talk about cancer. So uh, in 2008, early in the year, I was getting um, nosebleeds. Um, and I just figured I'm, I'm a trial lawyer, I'm a councilman, I'm under a lot of pressure. I'm just figuring it's stress, I'll have to get this checked out sometime. And then um, I started to have problems with my jaw, like when I was eating. I had to like loosen up my jaw before I could eat. And um, I started to have, feel like I had fluid in my ear. So it got worse and worse, like I, they would make fun of me in my office. This just shows you the kind of guy I was, by the way. I would lean back in my chair so I could hear, you know, they're all like, you know, never think about like, maybe that's your physician. <laughs> Finally, I was like, why don't I go to um, an ENT? That might be a good idea. Because they, they know about ears. So my wife sent me to um, Dr. Tom at, um, uh, um, it's the big one, allergy specialist or whatever, a huge operation in Yonkers. And Dr. Tom like checks me out and he says, oh, I see some swelling, we're gonna put you in antibiotics. And I was like, really? Antibiotics? Really? Antibiotics? Can I just take aspirin? He's like, no, no, we'll try this. So no, no talking cancer, I'm not thinking about cancer. I go on vacation, I come back. Uh, the swelling hasn't gone away, we're going to send you for MRI. I go back to my office, it's a quarter to five, and it's a Friday afternoon, and I'm thinking, you know, like it's one of those points where you say, what do I do? What can I do? I can't start that, that's going to be three hours. Uh, I'll call and find out what happened with that MRI. And, and I call, and this group is huge in Yonkers, right? So I call and I say, hi, this is Tom Roach, Doc, Dr. Tom needs to see you Monday morning. I go, oh, here, I have an appointment Thursday. No, he needs you Monday morning. I said, uh, and then there's a knock on the door. Dr. Tom is calling from his cell phone. He needs to speak to you. And I just said, holy, you know. <laughs> I was like, I couldn't believe it. So um, they were like, we found a mass in your nasal pharynx, which I, I was like, I, I don't have one. <laughs> well, it turns out I do have one. We all have one. We just never see it. So then I came to see Dr. Lee. He sent me for the PET CT, I think, and MRI, and I would else. And I just remember waiting in the waiting room with my prescriptions, which you never look at normally. I never look at your bees. I've read a lot of your bees this, this time. Um, and I, I'm looking through the prescriptions. One is like rule out brain invasion. I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I was like, well, okay, yeah, I agree. Let's rule that out. <laughs> when we first went to see Dr. Pass, I was we were so freaked out. You see all these people in chairs, all these IVs go, oh my God, you know, I can't do this. And my first day in, I was like, I want to be in a room by myself. And, um, you know, I'm on the council. My kids don't know. because I didn't want to tell my kids until I could tell them that I'm going to live. Or if I'm not going to live, that I got to handle it a different way. I'm not going to tell them anything because you got an eight and five year old. They're not going to say, well, what's the prognosis and what treatment I'm going to They're going to say, why are you going to die? And, and have to answer that question. So, so I didn't want to tell them right away. So we were trying to keep it uh, somewhat undercover. And, um, that first day I'm in that room by myself and, and then they sent in a guy who was getting near the end of his treatment, he was had an IV pole, and he comes walking in, he's a Met fan, there's like seven of us left, so and, 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 uh, and, and he started talking to me about his cancer and all this stuff, but he was like, it was a really great conversation, it made me feel better. And you know, the next day I was like, you know, I want to be out in the room, go for it, live your life, you know, do everything you can, um, and don't be afraid because someday it's coming. So so live now. And, and I'll just finish up, this is gonna be corny to some people, but for some reason it stuck in my brain. I remember when Michael Landon had cancer. Um, it was like, I, I thought I was younger, but I actually looked it up online. You can't get the actual appearance, but um, I was older. I was like, I think at 28, I was a lawyer already. But I remember it stuck with me at the time that this, he went on The Tonight Show, and this is like, this is like the guy that was uh, little Joe, and then he was Pa, and then he was, whatever he was, he was likable. He was just one of those guys who felt like, yeah, if I ever met him, he's, he seems like a really nice guy. And um, he went on the Tonight Show and said, I have pancreatic cancer and I'm going to die. And then probably, and I, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. You're sitting there, at the, the bravery, and I remember at a point he turned to the uh, audience and turned to the camera and said, live every day, guys. I remember that, and I remember like trying to carry that with me after that, because I just, I was like, thought that was so brave and such a great message. Once you have cancer, I think that's that's what I come down to. It's like live every day, um, enjoy every day, and, and, and you know, if you wake up and you don't feel sick, you know, smile. <laughs>